show today. We're throwing in an extra one. Um, we got Amy Weeze with us. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me again. I loved hanging out with you guys last time. It was so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of fun. So for anyone who missed that show, you can definitely uh, see it <clears throat> on YouTube. Um, it was our very last show of 2019. So it's fitting to have you back as one of our first shows in 2020. <laughs> So, yeah, it's um, crazy that it's 2020, right? Like what happened? <laughs> oh God, I know. Crazy. Um, but I think last time we had been talking a little bit about your conference and the conference is next week. So it's probably, you know, most of you, it's too late to make travel plans and all of that. But if you happen to live near or in San Antonio, is that where it is? Yes. San Antonio, Texas. It's next week um, and you have until Friday to get tickets. So that's something to think yeah. about. Um, it's a really good conference for just learning how to brand your business, learning how to grow as an entrepreneur. Well, you could you could talk about it a little bit. Yeah, so we're just gonna spend, you know, I, I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs and, you know, in my consulting business and no matter what business you're in, whether you're doing retail arbitrage or e-commerce or you're an accountant or you're a service-based business, everyone struggles with this, myself included. Yeah. Everyone struggles with like, what is my vision for my business and how do I turn that into an action plan? Yeah. You know, so that's what we're spending. We're literally spending three days. We have 15 mentors flying yeah. in from around the country. And we're just spending three days of actionable workshops and working yeah. on first, the first day is going to be about just kind of like just focusing on your vision and your growth and what you want for your company and, and being able to properly craft a vision statement, you know, because that's kind of hard too. You're like, I don't yeah. know, how do I even <laughs> how do, I do that? You know? Yeah. So we're going to focus the first day is all about vision and pitch. And so being able to craft your vision and then being able to talk about what you do. And nice. that is such a powerful skill to have. And then um, on Wednesday, we're going to focus on strategy, growth, and goal setting. So being able to now, okay, I got my vision. I know how to talk about my business. What's my strategy? <laughs> how do I turn that into like, how do I set some goals? How do I yep. set some milestones? How do I hold myself accountable? So we're going to do some of that stuff. And then the last day, we're actually going to talk about execution, right? Because ideas are cheap. Execution yeah. is where it's at. So we're going to talk about how do you scale? How do you outsource? How do you, what legal considerations should you have? Um, and how do you do like social media? And, you know, we're going to throw some marketing in there too, because that's so important. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, how do you basically take this big, plan that you have and like yeah. actually start turning around executing. So looking forward to that, to, you know, just even for my own businesses, just to yeah. spend three days. Really it's so important. I just came back from uh, Columbus. Uh, Christina and I did that where we spent two full days um, just going over our business, uh, Merge Money business, and trying to figure out what we want to do this year, what our like you said, like, what's our mission? What's our, what's our goal this year? And really breaking it down and making a schedule and putting everything on the calendar, like what days we do things. And uh, it's really important to just think big picture once in a while and actually make a plan <laughs> instead of just swinging it every day. Yeah. Um, we recently started um, something called the 12 week year in our, oh, across our businesses. I and love so that book. Oh, it's really good. Yeah. So, and you know, I used to be a, um, a planner in the military. Uh -huh. And so I utilize a lot of those skills and I'm really good at taking a big vision and turning it into goals. But I love the 12 week year because now we can break it up into, um, 12 weeks every yeah. quarter. Right. And then we can break those goals down even further. So yep. what that did for me is just take my normal goal setting techniques and put them on a better timeline and have help the team to be able to like kind of, okay, what are we aiming for this quarter? Right. So we're doing weekly meetings as a team and talking about our, our goals and our, um, and then like breaking those things down and letting people own their own tasks and really keep themselves yeah. accountable, talk about our wins every week. So it's, it's like, it's been really good, but nice. um, we're definitely like just kind of getting into it, you know? So. Well, if anybody hasn't read that book, it's called the 12 week year. 
And I think it was recommended to me by one of the ladies in the mastermind group. I think uh, Sandra, I want to say. So thank you to her and thank you to you for bringing it up again. Um, that's a good one, guys. So, all right. Well, the main point of today was to talk about China. So tell us about China. <laughs> tell us so about your trip. We are definitely uh, excited about going to China again. And, you know, I don't want to start it off with a scare. Uh, we know in the U.S. right now, the flu has been rampant, right? Like everybody's had the flu and um, and uh, there's been a lot of news lately about a kind of virus that's going around in China that's been scaring, uh, that's been a little bit scary. So we're definitely keeping our eye on that. Um, my partner, Baptiste, in this China trip actually lives in China. So oh, okay. it's helpful for him to live there and actually have a pulse on what's going on versus yes. us just like getting news stories and right. stuff like that. So we're definitely keeping our eye on that. Um, thus far, what Baptiste is saying is that it's very um, centralized to one area and they're doing a pretty good job of treatment and controlling it. So hopefully that all stays um, under control and everything and, uh, and, and all of that. But we're definitely keeping our eye on that just in case anyone has questions like, oh, did you hear about what's, you know, <laughs> people, few people have been messaging me like, hey, yeah, did you hear about that? You go to China, right? Are you still yeah. going to China? So, uh, yeah, still planning on going to China. Um, and, you know, but definitely we're keeping our eye on that. And I actually have some visuals I can share. Oh, and, that'd be um, great. Yeah, I have a little slideshow here. Mm. Um, let me go to the share screen button and we can walk through it great and just to talk about the china trip all right let's see all right so can you guys see that yep all right is it big now y yes okay good all right so uh, as you know, my company name is Amazing at Home, and we do business consulting, and we write listings, and we do um, just a lot of helping people get their brand set up and helping them be successful in e-commerce. And so we now, we used to have a, a trip um, called the Canton Fair Experience, and it was a huge, like, big two-month-long course Um and kind of teaching you everything from product development all the way through kind of creating unique products. And then we ended in China. And so that business recently ended. We've taken almost 60 different entrepreneurs to China with us on several trips. And um, we ended that business because we just kind of had a different way that we wanted to go about it. My partner really wanted to um, continue offering it as a big bulk kind of thing. And, um, and I wanted to really separate the course and the trip because so many, there's so much to cover in the course when you're developing a product. And, um, so many of my following reached out and said, Hey, you know, is it possible to get this course without the China trip? Um, and then we just didn't really have a way where we could offer that to them. So we ended, um, my partner, Stephen and I, we had the Canton Fair experience together um, and, uh, we ended that together and it was good. And, and it's, and we still support the uh, folks that went with us on that trip. They are still in their, their private Facebook groups and everything, and they're supporting each other and it's great. Um, but I have moved on on my own and now I am separating the course from the China trip. So we're here today to talk about, you know, this was the old, the old, um, course and trip together. And then now we're going to separate the course and the trip and, and make it really, really super affordable and flexible. I want you guys, if you want to go to China and you just, you need to go because it's, it's such a game changer for your business when you actually see what's available. Uh, I could give you an example. Um, I have some floor mats that I sell, right? And I had been sourcing them on uh, Alibaba. And, you know, I was paying $2.65 for them and um, per unit. And I sell them for a little over $20. So not bad. I have a 10x multiplier on those, you know, buy for 10, sell for, uh, or buy for two, sell for 20. So pretty good margins on those. 
But when I went to Canton Fair um, this last time, I looked for a new supplier. I went and visited my factory um, and I went and looked for a new supplier. And I found a supplier at the Canton Fair and my quote at the Canton Fair was 65 cents a floor mat. Wow. So right there, I took over $2 per unit off just by, so right there that paid for my China trip. Right. You know what I mean? Um, so it's just, it's really cool kind of seeing the different products that are available. Um, the cool thing about going to the Canton Fair is there are over 60,000 booths of suppliers. Um, so it's just, it's a really, it's a really cool way to actually see China and, um, and see how much manufacturing is done there. There's three different phases. We go during phase two, but we also offer, you know, the ability for you to extend your trip if you want to come during phase one or phase three, but every phase there are over 60,000 different booths of manufacturers. This Canton Fair facility, if you think of it like a trade show, it's the size of three airports. Wow. And um, yeah, and there's over 60,000. If you had to, if you had to walk all of these booths of manufacturers, um, it literally, it's 217 football fields. Wow. Let me uh, stop for just a second and just bring this around to all the, um, the audience. So some of you have come from FBA or private label and you know exactly what we're talking about. And then some of you have no idea what we're talking about and you never even thought about going to China. So for all of this, that group of people, um, private label and selling products, um, is a great it's a great business model first of all it's a great way to make money it's a it's a, something that a lot of people do on amazon for us there's a couple of ways that it could apply to us one is if we can find products over there that we could possibly um you know maybe you could find t-shirts or you could find something and you could print them yourself instead of having it go through one of these print on demand companies so that would save you a lot of money up front um, so that's one way. Or the other way is if you have an Etsy store or you have um, your own website and you're selling print on demand products, companies like Printful, for example, if you're using Printful to fulfill your print on demand products, Printful also has warehouses to store other products. So for instance, let's say you're selling dog t-shirts or some kind of like t-shirt with a dog theme. You could go to this China trip and source dog bowls, dog leashes, dog, you know, whatever, something to go along with your brand. It can be stored at Printful. And so you wouldn't have to fulfill anything. Printful would fulfill it. They would print your print on demand products, um, but they would also be able to store your private label products. So it's definitely something that even if you're doing a print on demand business, you can incorporate private label into it. And can I add to that? You know, what's so cool about be, what you guys have as an advantage as print on demand folks is that you guys have unique designs. Right. And that is something that most private labelers don't have. And so now imagine that you have a popular design that's doing really great on a t shirt or doing really great on a coffee mug. And now you can go make your own custom shape um, kitchen containers or your own um, custom. Um, version of a coffee mug that's actually like really cool. Maybe you can do like a double wall insulated one with your own design. And, you know, you already have the design, you already own it. You can now offer that design on so many more products than your competitors who are only sourcing through print on demand right. um, resources, right? right? So imagine just the ability to have a relationship with, for example, a ceramics factory. Yeah, you can make something in any shape you would like to make it in. And, you know, you can get that product for such a better price. Right now you can offer your your products with your own designs for better prices than your competitors. Right. And people are going to go, oh, my gosh, that is so cool. Look at that design. I love it. And oh, my gosh, look at that coffee mug is so much better priced and it's better quality. I'm yeah. buying that. And you yeah. can literally now compete in a way that you could never compete before. Yes. And right there alone, again, that right there will pay for your China trip. Exactly. And it's just being around other entrepreneurs and just learning. Like it's a, I haven't actually been, but I've seen all the, uh, 
videos and pictures and stuff. And it's just anyone that I have talked to that has gone to China has absolutely loved it. And you just, you learn so much just from the experience of going. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And there's so, there's so many cool um, products that you probably didn't even think of, you know, um, mm -hmm. just that kind of could open up your, your world. And so the, the cool thing is you're not necessarily, it's called a sourcing trip, right? But you're not necessarily sourcing while you're there. What you're doing while you're there is you're discovering and making contacts so that now you can come back from Canton Fair and you can now follow up with suppliers and you have, you've met them in person. You're not going back and forth on Alibaba messaging for, you know, forever. You now have a personal relationship with them. You have, you know, you can even visit their factory while you're there. Like they'll, they'll be happy to have you do that. Um, but it's just, it just really changes the game for you and allows you to, um, really take your brand and, and your products to the next level because now you have direct sources and you're not having to wonder who am I talking to on Alibaba or, you know, what, right. what's going on and why does this take me five years to get a product and the prices are crazy? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's, it's great that you can go in person you can actually touch the products and talk to the suppliers. And, and a lot of people are wondering like, do I need to speak Chinese? And no, like they, they have sales uh, reps that, that speak English. Um, and most of the time, people at the factory speak English. So you don't need a translator. You don't, you know, it's, it's, it's a really friendly, fun place to actually go and, and check out. And it will totally change your view about China after you go for the first time. It's funny. Yeah. When we walked in for the first time to Canton Fair and just looked around at all of just everything that was there just looked into one hall and saw all these booths and all these different products. It was so exciting. You know, there mm -hmm. was so much excitement in the air and all of us looked at each other and, you know, that first trip, there was 19 of us and we looked at each other and we were like, Oh man, <laughs> this will not be the last time that we come back to China. You know, it yeah. just kind of like opened the door for us. And that's why now I'm, I'm taking these China trips because it's so cool to see people experience it for the first time. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming and explaining it to us. And so I don't want to keep interrupting you with your, your uh, slides. Yeah. Here. So no, I'm glad that you broke that down though, because I, I definitely want to make sure that people are understanding that it is an opportunity for, for all different types of businesses. Mm -hmm. um, whether you're just, you know, doing print on demand or whether you have a private label or whether you just have a service-based business that supports um, other product-based businesses. Like just imagine kind of learning more about manufacturing and products and um, and how That's the whole system very, works. Very good point that you brought up because I know um, one of the insurance reps that um, speaks at a lot of the Amazon conferences, she went on a China trip and it has nothing to do with insurance at all, but she just wanted to experience like, what are her clients' businesses like? Like, what are we insuring here? And like, she really went on the whole trip, learned the whole thing. And it makes it so that when she speaks at these conferences, like she knows exactly what everyone's business is like. It just, so, so yeah, there's all different reasons and people why you would want to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I actually have some folks that um, that are on my team that are just, you know, they just work for our business a couple of times, you know, a couple of times a week and they're just part time and and they want to come just to come just to check it out, just to see, you know, because it is such a cool thing. I mean, it's the largest influx of Westerners to China uh, twice a year. So it's a pretty big deal. And, and China gets excited about it, too, you know, and it's it's a, it's really neat. It's really neat. So let's talk about what actually we're going to do. So there's three phases to the Canton Fair. Um, and the first phase is electronics um, and manufacturing. So you can come and see like big machines that get sold to factories and stuff like that. And then you can come see some really cool electronics. Like we did a roller coaster VR ride. There was like some VR booths in there and, um, and, you know, there's lots of cool things that you can check out. And it's it's cool. You can walk into these booths and touch things and feel things. There's robotics, all kinds of cool stuff. So that's phase one. And we're not actually going during phase one. We'll be there. So those people that want to come during phase one, they can extend their hotel dates. That's fine. But we are actually, our program is going to be during phase two. 
Phase two is pets, gifts, housewares, um, pretty much everything that you see on Amazon. <laughs> yeah. This is, you know, all of, of everything, right? Um, you name it, it's during phase two. So we usually go during phase two. It's a week long. And, um, and that is when our program will be. And then there's phase three, which is right after phase two. And phase three is um, sporting goods, medical uh, products and devices, and apparel. So that is phase three. So some people that want to stay for a few days into phase three, they will just stay, you know, one or two days into phase three, and then they'll depart right after that. So that's kind of what's going on. We're going during phase two, which is one week long. And what our trip covers is we cover your um, airport and fare transportation. So every when you get there, there will be somebody holding a sign with your name on it to bring you a private car to bring you to the hotel. And same thing to take you back to the airport at the end of your trip. And then we also cover daily transportation to and from the hotel to the Canton Fair. And we'll ride together. It's a lot of fun. It's a bus that goes from the hotel to the Canton Fair. Um, and then we cover seven nights of your hotel with breakfast. Um, and it actually works out to be eight nights because we're um, if you arrive on the 20th, um, we actually cover all eight nights there. And then you've got three paid dinners. So your breakfast is covered every morning. And then we're also going to cover your dinners for three of the nights. Um, and we're also going to give you a tour of the Canton Fair to help you understand like what you should be looking for, how to navigate things. And then before we go on the trip for a whole month, uh, well, actually about a month and a half, the first two weeks will actually help you with your travel reservations, will help you kind of get your visa because you'll need a business visa to go visit China. So we'll help you with that. And then we are going to do a sourcing class in the Facebook group. So we're going to actually teach you about sourcing and about what you're going to see at the fair and how you should communicate with suppliers and a little bit about negotiating your pricing and stuff like that. So that's what's covered in your trip. We're really going to help you just get familiar. And then you're going to get to meet the other people that are coming on the trip so that when you meet each other at the hotel for the first time, it's not going to be so like you're meeting strangers, right? You're going to kind of know these people and have kind of strategized together and be excited about sourcing together. And it's fun because you're meeting people so that afterwards you can probably have connections now that you could talk to and be like, oh, this is what happened when... I tried to, you know, work with this supplier that, and, you know, bounce ideas off each other. Yeah, there's that power of three is what we call it, you know, and we will walk the fair together in a group of three because, you know, it's crazy when you get three people together and you're like looking for product ideas and stuff like that, like how much you come up with when the three, when three people are together, like looking at things versus you just walking around by yourself. Right. So right. it's great to go in a group and, um, and our groups are so great because getting to know each other in that Facebook group ahead of time, you really kind of feel like, like people, you know, meet each other when they arrive, you know, we share our travel information and, you know, they meet each other and we're eating breakfast together every morning. And it's just like, it's like the ultimate networking experience. You can kind of think of it as like, a really cool conference, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really, really fun. And, uh, it's, it's, we make a lot of really great friends. So, uh, just to kind of give you guys some dates here, um, phase one of Canton Fair is April 15th through the 19th. And again, um, we, uh, you're welcome to come during phase one, but our, our hotel and everything that we're covering is from April 20th through the 28th. So you would arrive on April 20th and you would depart on April 28th. And the Canton Fair is from the 23rd to the 27th. Um, and then uh, phase three of the fair, if you stay for that, is from May 1st through the 5th. So that's just some details. Our travel dates again are from about the 20th to the 28th of April. Now, our pricing. Everything that we include is the hotel, um, your seven nights of your hotel, um, dinners, your breakfast, your airport and fair transportation every day. Uh, and then all of that, the Facebook group sourcing class that we're doing. 
and all of the strategy sessions and helping you with your travel. Um, that's all covered in our pricing. So the only thing that you're really paying for is your flight. Uh, just to kind of give you an idea, I did a round trip multi-city flight from San Antonio, Texas. First, I went to Shanghai and I spent a couple days. Then I went to Guangzhou and I spent a month there <laughs> for wow. all three phases. And then I went to Chengdu, the world's largest panda breeding ground, and I played with the pandas. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then I went to Beijing and I saw the Great Wall and I sledded down on toboggans from the Great Wall, which was so cool. And my round trip ticket was less than $700. Oh, my God. Yeah, that so sounds like such a fun trip. Did you vlog that? Because I need to see that. <laughs> there is a bunch. I did put a bunch of videos out there of that. And it was so much fun. This time, I think I want to go see the Terracotta Warriors because I have heard from so many people that the Terracotta Warriors are just the coolest thing. And the first time I went to Guilin, which is like um, the movie Avatar was filmed there. And it's just like super beautiful, like these mysterious mountains. And um, so I always try to add in kind of just like a fun, like side travel trip. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, multi-city flights around China are dirt cheap. So yeah. it's just really affordable to, uh, to make the flight, the trip. And then meals. So during the fair every day, lunches are not covered, right? You're just going to be at the fair but you can buy a huge meal at the fair for less than $5 US money. Yeah. So it's really super affordable. I mean, you're talking, you're not going to really spend more than a hundred bucks on meals for the week and your breakfast and your dinners on most days are covered. Um, and then you can choose some add-ons. So we are offering some paid add-ons that you can choose. And we're going to talk about those next. Um, and then any additional travel is what you you would be responsible for. So if, you know, you add on a, a trip to like you, you want to go see the Great Wall or something like that, as long as you're in China. Well, um, and again, we're going to help you kind of decide on those things and book those things and give you advice on those things to make the most of your trip. But um, that would be, you know, your out of pocket costs. Our trip price is twenty nine ninety five. So right now we have early bird pricing until... Um, until the 1st of March. And that's when it goes up a little bit because that's when hotel prices really climb and everything. Um, so we need you to lock it in now for that early bird pricing. Um, and then we're also doing some double occupancy pricing. So we're going to release that um, on the website as well. So if you're wanting to do a double occupancy trip, that is $34.95 for a double occupancy trip. So two of you can come and split that and you can get a super affordable um, trip. Uh, yeah, because that would make it less than less than 2000 a person, like yes. 1700 or so. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. So it's just really great. I mean, I really just, you know, the closest group China trip um, in price that covers your hotel, there's one called China Magic. And um, that is a, another like group travel trip to the Canton Fair and stuff. And their their prices start at six thousand dollars. Yeah. So like, you know it's it's very. I made it super affordable, and you know I just want to remove the barriers because I want people to be able to experience it. Yeah, because plus it's just so much easier. Like if I was trying to figure out where to stay, like I I wouldn't even know where to begin. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, exactly. And just kind of being able to go for the first time and meet other people and, and just have this whole experience together is just, it's just like nothing else. And, and you're going to love it. Like it's, it's really great. So um, if you guys, this is something that you, it's been on your bucket list and something you want to do, um, you can come with us for nearly the same price as you'd be able to come on your own. <laughs> so yeah. it's pretty, it's pretty fun. Um, so what are we going to cover in the Facebook group? We have the sourcing masterclass, and this is included with your trip. And we're going to talk about sourcing 101. So how do you make a sourcing list? How do you find suppliers? How do you do a factory visit? You know, like what should you expect? What should you be looking for when you're talking to suppliers? How do you tell between a trading company and a factory? Uh, why does it matter? You know? And then communication and negotiation. We're dealing with a different culture here. So I'm going to teach you about how to communicate in China 
with suppliers, um, customs, courtesies, that kind of stuff, how to negotiate to get the best prices. Um, and we're going to cover how to deal with sourcing agents. If you want to use a sourcing agent, what should you look for in a sourcing agent? Um, you know, you definitely don't need to use a sourcing agent, um, but it's important to understand what you should look for and, and what um, what they're all about, right? And then uh, we're going to cover quality control and inspections. I can't tell you how many nightmare stories I've heard about quality control and inspections. Like people just, they don't understand how to get their products inspected. They're, they're scared about that. So I just want to make sure that people understand how to do that and that it's just a regular part of your business process and it doesn't have to be scary or expensive. Um, it can be really great. Um, and then finally, logistics. So, you know, how do you import? Um, what are these tariff things all about? <laughs> and, you know, and then what about shipping? What about freight forwarding? How do I get products from China to America or to another country if I'm if I'm selling in, in Japan or Europe or, you know, any of that kind of stuff? So just really kind of the basics of sourcing and some things that aren't really covered in other sourcing courses. So looking forward to including that free. So you're getting that that um, free with your trip and that'll take place in the Facebook group before we go. That's awesome, Dwayne. Dwayne's watching. He says, this sounds like an awesome opportunity. Yeah, it is. it is. I, I So many people just make excuses, like myself included. Like it's just like, we have these barriers. So private label is one of those things that literally it's still a barrier for me, but it was a barrier from like, I've been, I did uh, FBA. What was it? 2014. We're in 2020, six years where I'm like, Oh, you know, tariffs are too hard. This is too hard. Eventually you just got to go on the trip and get past it. Like there are so many people who do this. Um, it's not too hard. Yeah, it's it's really it really just kind of opens your eyes and helps you realize yeah. like it helps you make the link because I think the reason that private label is so scary to people, even white label, you know, can be scary to people. I think the reason it's scary is because there are China is so far away mm -hmm. <laughs> and there are so many variables that are unknown. Right. Exactly. And what happens when you're no longer sourcing on Alibaba and you actually go and see it in person you're like, oh, I get it. It's not so far away and it's not that hard. <laughs> right. So it's like you suddenly, you kind of get all these questions answered. It's like, uh, you know, you hear about a place before you actually go and visit yourself. You're not really sure, you know. Exactly. And, and, and I think just going yeah. with other people just helps so much because, you see other people sourcing, you see other people doing it. And so it's kind of like all of your excuses don't work because you can see the other person's doing it. So it's like, well, why can't you do it? So I, I really uh, just like the whole idea of it. Yeah. And even, you know, on past trips, we've had like brand new people who have never done private label or anything like that before, but they get so much out of it because it just opens the door. Right? right. And now you're not afraid to go to China anymore and you don't have to go during Canton Fair. Like you can go anytime during the year and, you know, tickets are super inexpensive and you know how to navigate the country. And it's just it's not such a big deal anymore, you know, and it just it just really opens up a whole nother world for you, um, no matter what business model you're in. I think it's just uh, really cool to to see where most of these products, even you think about if you're sourcing your products from, you know, Printful or some of the, that, where do you think they're getting their products? Exactly. From? Yep. <laughs> so what happens when you remove the middleman guys? Yeah. It's pretty amazing. So, uh, and then what happens when you see what the middleman has access to? Uh, yeah. It's and you can add, you can make bundles. So we've uh, several people on Etsy have uh, bundles. Um, and some of the print on demand companies are helping with the bundles. So some of the print on demand companies are adding like pajama pants. The like bottoms with the print on demand t-shirt. So it's not print on de demand um, pajama bottoms, but it's print on demand t-shirt and you can sell them together. They can source, you know, tons of the Christmas plaid or whatever PJs. And then it's, uh, so it's not very expensive for them, but it helps you sell more. And it's like such a great opportunity. So that's the kind of thing you can just get yourself. You don't have to wait for the print on demand company. You can 
you know, things that look good with t-shirts, you can just go ahead and buy those in bulk um, from these kind of things. Right. And we actually will show you also how to source in smaller quantities. That's mm -hmm. something that is really um, nerve wracking for people that are um, coming to Canton Fair is they think that they have to source in like thousands. And there's definitely techniques that you can use that we'll cover in our sourcing class, mm -hmm. um, how to kind of get smaller quantities. Now you're not going to be able to get 50, you know, but, but the prices are so low that it's like 50 might sound like a lot or a hundred might or a thousand, but when you really price it out, it's like, okay, well, they were a dollar each. Like it's not yeah. that bad. Ex exactly. Exactly. So. Uh, and that's why it's important to understand, um, importing costs too, because a lot of people, um, they don't really know like how much it's going to cost to ship or, or how to do that. And so then it makes pricing really hard. Cause you're like, okay, wait, I can buy it from the factory for this much, but how much is it going to cost me to ship? And that's why I include the shipping information in that sourcing masterclass, because I want you guys to understand that and how to calculate that because it becomes an important part of your sourcing. Yeah. Um, so we're going to do some add-ons um, on the trip that you're going to be able to add uh, onto your trip should you choose. So you already know what's included. You're already getting your hotel and the group and the sourcing class and all of that. But we're going to do some really fun add-ons um, for you to participate in in the evenings and, and stuff like that. So the first thing that we're doing is an expert sourcing masterclass. So the, the first sourcing masterclass that's actually included in the trip, we already talked about, right? Mm -hmm. What this is, is in person in China. Um, how do you source outside the Canton Fair? So at the Canton Fair, those companies, those factories spend over $100,000 just for one booth. Whoa. Yeah, it's really expensive. And oh my so it's, God. Yeah, it's just like a, it's a tiny sliver of the amount of factories that are in China and the, uh, you know, the amount of products that are made there. And it's just... So when, when you just want to find a supplier for something, let's say you come to Canton Fair with us and you're like, oh, this is great, you know, and I'm, I'm going to source this, this, and this, and I got all these great contacts. And then you come back home and you're like, oh man, now I want to get into picture frames. How do I, where, I didn't look for a supplier for picture frames at Canton Fair. Now what do I do? So I have friends in China uh, that are Chinese um, and, uh, and not Chinese that just have teams in China and they are going to come speak on a panel and they're going to teach you guys how you can find factories outside of Canton Fair any time of year. They're going to teach you about how to develop new products, how to get factories to kind of do that stuff for you, how to really take your negotiation to the next level by you know, kind of checking some prices against um, the market and, and against um, uh, Chinese apps and stuff. So this is like the expert level. This is for the folks that are like, you know, I've been sourcing, I've been coming to Canton Fair, maybe I've gone to Canton Fair one time before, I've been doing that, but now I want to know how these other people are doing it. Like, I want to know how do I take it next level, right? So we're going to bring a panel together and you're going to learn so much about that. Um, nice. Yeah. So the next add on that we're going to do is another masterclass and it's going to be a China legal masterclass. So the other thing people are always scared about in China is actually how do you make an order? What kind of things should you have in your order? How do you actually prevent that factory from selling to someone else? Like, how do you prevent your designs, especially you guys with unique designs? How do you you protect your designs from being sold to someone else? Um, so my Chinese attorney is going to come talk and we are going to really help you through learning how to place an order, learning how to prepare your legal documents, learning how law in China kind of works and what you should be looking out for. So that you're just informed and you understand, like when you get back from Canton Fair and you start following up with some of these suppliers and you're like, I'm going to make my first order. And then you go, oh, wait, I don't actually know how to make an order. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we're going to definitely do that for you and, um, and hook you up. Um, so we're going to have that masterclass. And then the, the next thing that we're going to do is a factory tour. So we're going to take you to a couple of different factories 
there is nothing cooler than actually seeing what happens in a factory. I that sounds so awesome to actually see the process. Yeah, so you get to, you know, we're we're going to take you to a few different factories um, and you're going to get to see the machines in operation. You're going to get to see the, you know, people putting things together. And then the most important part about a factory tour is actually understanding how to do a factory tour with a potential supplier. So how are, what are you supposed to look for? Yeah. What are you supposed to, <laughs> like, what should a factory look like? What, what areas of the factory should you ask to visit? What kind of questions are okay to ask? You know, all of that, like we're going to walk through a factory with you as if you were on, you know, that was your factory tour so that you're not scared. You can go then to Canton Fair and you can say, hey, can I visit your factory? And you can actually feel confident in visiting a factory and knowing what you're doing. So Amazing. Um, and, getting to nerd out, you know, and see all the fun, like injection molding taking place. And yeah, it's so neat. Because a lot of times you're going to want to, you might find a product you like, but you might want to customize it a little or change it a little. So I think knowing the right language to be able to explain it to someone at a factory too, like explain your idea and what you want them to do. Like, if you understand molds, and you understand these different things, you'll be able to more easily know like what's possible and what to say and what to ask for and all of that. And I'm glad that you mentioned that because the coolest thing about visiting factories besides watching these processes happen and getting to talk to the factory owners and getting all your, your nerdy questions answered, they're so knowledgeable and they really teach you about all the processes. It's such a cool experience. But besides that, you can go to Canton Fair and see a booth, but what these these factories, you know, they spend a lot of money to be at Canton Fair. So they bring their most innovative, newest products to Canton Fair. So you don't see all of the other products that they actually make until you go visit the factory. And they have their showrooms at the factory and you wouldn't believe how many products they make. So I went, I remember um, Stephen and I, uh, we went to this, this factory together um, for a product that we were thinking about doing together. And we were just looking at this one container, right, um, that we were interested in. It was like a, a kitchen container. And we go to the factory and they literally have like 60 different mold making, or not mold making, sorry, um, injection molding machines. And they make products for Coca-Cola they make products for um, all these like Six Flags and all these theme parks. And they have these huge showrooms of all these different products. But we were so narrowly focused on, you know, one thing that we were interested in that they brought to Canton Fair that we had no idea how many more things. So now I have a great relationship with them. And if I need something injection molded or if I need something that's plastic, I know I'm going to them because they're so professional and they're so awesome. And I have a relationship with them. So it just it's a game changer to really go visit a factory. And you see so much more um, when you do that. And then also it really changes your pricing. A yeah. lot of you'll hear a lot of, you know, if you if you listen to other people talk about their China trips, they'll say, oh, yeah, I went to Canton Fair and I saved all this money. Well, you wouldn't believe the money you save when you develop a relationship and you actually go visit a factory. It Absolutely. And just understand, like you said, like instead of being narrow focused on one product, you can kind of see like, oh, these are all the different variations. Like I didn't even think of that. And like when people do, I think you've said it before, but people do private label products on Amazon, they see what's selling well, and then they kind of just do the same thing. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, no, you want to differentiate yourself and you could see what's selling really well. And then actually read the comments that people are posting the reviews, see what they don't like about it. And then if you know the factory and know who's making it, you can just, you know, be like, can you just make this little adjustment? You know, the... Yeah, and, you know, it needs to be a little smaller or whatever it is. And think about when you go to a factory and you see all the different materials that they use. So let's say you're thinking about doing a unique coffee mug and you go to this factory and all of a sudden you see all these different types of coffee mugs and different materials that they use. And they'll they don't know to 
to offer these things to you until you actually go and you're interested in it. Right. 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 So if you go and you see this coffee mug made out of leather or made out of like some other, and you're like, Oh my gosh, like that would take me next level. Like, can we do that with this design? They're going to go, yeah, we can definitely do that. I just didn't know you were interested in that, you know? So you don't know until you actually go to the factory and you see the different possibilities and suddenly you're like, oh, wow, we could totally do that. And you, it, it's just, it's so cool. You guys, it's, it's awesome. So the final thing too is, well, also at Canton Fair, I will be opening up my schedule. As you guys know, I'm a consultant. So you'll be able to book private time with me where I will walk through the fair by your side. I will help you source. I will negotiate for you if you would like me to. Um, anything that you would like during that time frame, you can book private time with me at the Canton Fair for the rest of the week. And then um, we're going to do some shopping types of things. There's some really fun shopping trips and, and sightseeing things. And then we're also going to do a Pearl River cruise. The Pearl River is like a gem that flows through the middle of Guangzhou. And it is every river in cities in China lights up at night. All of the big buildings, all the skyscrapers, they all light up from bottom to top. And they're all, um, they have these like, it looks like an amazing light show. But the wow. boats on the Pearl River actually light up too. So you get on this, you get on the Pearl River on one of these boats and you just, you're surrounded by skyscrapers and lights and bridges that are all lit up. And you're just floating down this river on this big boat and you just get to like relax and take great pictures and just, you get to have one of those moments where you're like, wow, I am in China right now. I am wow like you know it's just it's so cool <laughs> so cool it's it's just so exciting and i've uh i i know that people they don't ever regret these kind of things like you always hear people so excited after the china trips and they're like oh my god like <laughs> so uh yes. i'm so glad that you're doing this are you offering these like twice a year is that what you said or is it just like you're not sure if you're going to do another one after this or yeah, so we um, we do April and October every year. That's when the Canton Fair is. Okay. Um, so April and October every year. Um, and again, this one is kind of a, a beta because we stopped the Canton Fair experience and we're doing mm -hmm. um, the the course and everything like that separately. So, um, you know, we want to, Baptiste and I want to keep it super affordable, super low barriers to entry. Um, so can I guarantee absolutely that we'll be going in October? No. Um, mm -hmm. however, you know, we never, we never can guarantee anything in this life. Right. Um, however, <laughs> that the plan is to, I mean, I love going to China, so, yeah. um, you know, the plan is definitely to, to continue it. So, um, well, this is on YouTube right now. It's on Facebook too. But so for all of you watching the replay, if it's after April, 2020, <laughs> The prices may be different. Things may be different. You could try the link, see if that still works for the uh, next next trip. Um, but you could also just message me or comment on this video and we'll get you the information at that time. Definitely. And so, you know, the bottom line is you can definitely go to China by yourself. <laughs> and you're going to hear many, if, you, if you're ever considering China and you watch some YouTube videos, people say, oh, don't go by yourself. It's so scary. And it's really not. It's really, you know, <laughs> but if you're going by yourself for the first time, uh, it could be scary. You might be nervous. You know, you don't know what you don't know. So I definitely don't want to discourage you from traveling by yourself, but it's way more fun to travel with us. <laughs> yeah. And for a lot of people, it really would be scary. I mean, people are scared just to go to conferences by themselves in the U.S., in their own city <laughs> they live. So it's like a lot of people are not as brave as you like it would be scary <laughs> for them so i i think it's uh i mean why not go with a group because it, it takes away so many of the barriers yes yeah, so that's it you guys i want you guys to consider uh, consider coming to china it's a really great price um it's even it's even a more incredible price if you do double occupancy so bring a friend and book together that'll be really fun and um and Again, you've got till till the end of February to, to lock it in. So we would love to have you. Um, and remember that it, you know other China trips are they're very a lot a lot more expensive. <laughs> yeah. So you know, and some of them don't even include your hotel. 
um, you know, and they're not necessarily as as flexible. So uh, I'm I'm definitely um, you know not not trying to discount other China trips. There's really great you know really great China trips, um, but I'm inviting you to take a trip to China with me. I promise it'll be fun. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for telling us about it and coming on. Um, real quick, uh, Dwayne has been watching and he says he has ideas for dino products um, at the end, dino toys. So he, he made a dinosaur calendar and has been selling that. Um, so I think he wants to have other products related to his dinosaur art. Um, for phase two, would that be somewhere where toys would be? Yes, toys are during phase two. It's so much fun to walk through the hall of toys. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Dwayne, let's go. <laughs> let's awesome. play with all the toys. I actually brought my daughters to China last time, my 12-year-old and my 10-year-old. You and, did? Oh. And yeah, and they the, the suppliers loved them. <laughs> they were like, which one is your favorite? You know, my daughter was in this sunglasses booth and my 10 year old and, Aww. and, you know, and my 12 year old actually had to get a buyer's badge because, uh, because <laughs> she is too tall. It goes by height. <laughs> it goes by height. Oh my God. Yeah. So it was just fun. Like we rode the little cars around and we're like, we went to all the booths and the suppliers just love seeing kids there because they're like, not, not less American kids. Cause they were like, Oh my gosh, you know, they're asking them all these questions. Like, which one is your favorite and what do you like? And, uh, but, and then all the booths always have food and stuff too. So my daughters figured that out and they were like, <laughs> Every booth they were in there, like, ooh, what do you have? Can I have some chocolate? <laughs> Can I have this? Can I have that? Oh my so, gosh. But it was so much fun. We had such a great time. Um, but yes, definitely, Dwayne, you're going to be able to um, find all kinds of different things for your brand. And you're going to get all kinds of fun ideas, too, that you probably didn't even think about, right? Just because you can apply the whole dinosaur thing to so many different products. Super exciting. Yes, yes, definitely. Well, I mean, that's pretty much all I have. The last slide is that I do have the course launching soon. So the course that used to be part of my China trip, um, I have that actually launching soon. So if you're interested in actually learning how to come up with ideas for products, how to do market research instead of using um, product research tools. I teach you how to do market research, how to dig into niches, um, and then how to validate your product ideas. So, you know, the biggest, scariest thing about getting into a new product idea is whether people will buy it. Right. So, you know, you don't want to introduce a new product to the market and then, you know, nobody buys it and you've spent all this money and you've got a garage full of products you can't sell. So, you know, what I really focus on in this course is actually teaching you how to do that market validation and ensure that people are going to buy what you're bringing to market. And then finally, the big part of, of starting a business is having a good plan. So mm -hmm. I'm going to help you with that in this ideation course. Um, so we've got that going. If you're interested in taking that course and really learning how to take your ideas to the next level, um, then definitely uh, that's at amazingathome.com slash ideation. You can sign up for that. And then if you're interested in the China trip, um, Helen has posted a link to that as well. And, um, and yeah, I'm open to any questions y'all have. And I look forward to um, having you guys in China for your first time. Awesome. Well, I think we don't have any more questions, but I agree with Dwayne. Thank you so much for sharing all this information and for coming on today. And um, I'm excited to have this like in our YouTube videos because over time, I'm sure like I'll get better with this kind of stuff and other people um, in the print on demand community will get better with it. So it'll be nice to reference this when more people are ready. Like right now, I feel like a lot of the audience may or may not be. We'll see yeah. what happens. But October or next April, I think um, it'll be pretty big because the print on demand companies are getting better at helping you with this. Like where it's it's you offer both. You offer print on demand T-shirts from them, but you can also store other products and it all goes together. Um, and it, 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 we're starting to get smaller and smaller margins for some of our products because there's so many people competing for the same type of thing. So it's really nice if you can learn how to have a t-shirt come with something else like make a bundle or have um or just 
you know, print your designs on some other product that you could source from China. I mean, is, there's so many ways it could go, but this is definitely something that that all of us should be thinking about in the future, if not right now. Some some people watching might be ready right now. Um, but yeah, it's it's really exciting. Very cool. Well, thanks for having me on and uh, thanks everybody for tuning in and let me know if you have any questions. All right. Well, have so much fun at the conference next week and um, happy early birthday and uh, we'll, we'll catch up again later. All right. Well, All right. Bye everybody. Later. Bye.